Good morning, everyone. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope y'all are doing well before we officially uh, break down camp here and take the RV on the road for warmer weather. I mean, we're still getting plenty of sunshine here at Taterland here in Sholo. Plenty of sunshine, but a uh, little, little chilly. Highs are in the 60s now. Lows, it has frozen a couple times. Uh, no snow yet. As soon as that happens, I'm out of here. But we got one more project a big undertaking that i would not normally do by myself it involves trailer swift my harley davidson trailer One more big project, oh boy, what am I getting myself into here? <laughs> I will be uploading this video with some connecting internet. Check out the video description below, whether off-grid or on the road, stay connecting. High-speed internet. Trailer Swift, my 12 by six foot Vino's Harley trailer is getting ready for a pretty big upgrade. Might take me a couple days though, but I have gained an incredible amount of knowledge over the years with solar systems and uh, to the point where I am going to install a separate, complete system in this trailer with solar panels on the roof, inverter, charger, all the wires and fuses and batteries and all that stuff. I'm gonna do it myself, guys, and not burn down the trailer. <laughs> it's going to be a very, simple, basic system, but it'll be a, a standalone system here on the trailer that I can plug into other things at camp or even plug in my RV into this separate system. It'll be an all-in-one system and I will show you the materials. It's really easy. Remember, uh, Danny and I picked up these used 250 watt solar panels from Solar Jerry's for 35 bucks. Danny is gonna use a few of them. I'm gonna use three of them. So we'll have 700 watts that we can fit on the top of Trailer Swift. I also stopped into Alternative Discount Energy, talked to Daryl and Larry there, I told them what I wanted to do, and they helped me build a custom system. Uh, complete with the wires and everything I'm going to need, all ready to go, even the MC4 connectors, everything's already got the connections put on and cut to about the right length I need. I picked up a 60 amp MPPT solar charge controller, very basic, but it'll get the job done. And then again, a very affordable pure sine wave 2000 watt inverter from GoWise Power. That's, well, also I have a 100 amp fuse for inline and the Z brackets for the panels. Oh, the battery. I'll save the battery for last, actually. We still got to, yeah, that's one battery that's 280 amp hours. More on that later. That uh, there does not stress me out at all, actually. I can do this, guys. First, we got to start with the panels. I already put the ladder away. I'll have to bring it back out, but I climbed up there last night to make sure that I can fit three panels up here. And uh, what I'll be doing is measuring so that I can hit these steel braces here every 14 inches on the roof so that we're gonna get a really good uh, solid connection here on the roof where these panels will not fly off. Hang on, B before I put the panels up on the roof, I was going to mount the Z brackets to the panels, and then I was gonna drill into these beams, and I decided, let's go ahead and measure one more time. And I'm glad I did. A little surprise here. This uh, Hallmark trailer is strange. If we go from the center to the center, it's exactly 15 and a half right there. But wait, right next to it, center to center is 16 and a half. Okay, the next one, are we back to 15 and a half? No, we're at 16. Center to center, that's three different ones in a row. The next one, what do you think? 15 and a half. Next one, 16. What the heck? I get it, when these trailers are built, they just do whatever. Uh, that is going to, what am I gonna do now? Okay, 
First of all, I'm gonna go get the bolts I need at Home Depot. We're gonna bolt it. We are not gonna screw. We are going to bolt it with washers and lag bolts so that none of that New Mexico wind's gonna rip it off. Secondly, um, what I'm gonna have to do is measure how wide the panels are, and then I will drill all the way up through the middle of each one of these, all the way through with uh, holes. And then wherever the, these ribs, uh, with those go on the panel, that's where I will attach the Z brackets to the side of the panels instead. So we'll do the roof first, and then we'll figure out bolting the panels. And that should be it as far as the weird stuff or the trips to town. Once the panels are secured and the wire comes down, all the rest of it should be smooth sailing from there, I hope. First, I want to stop in here. I've never been here before. The All Mountain RV Service and Supply. Let's see if they got some self-leveling Dicor in stock, because I need some. Looks like this RV in front of me needs something too. Wow, I should have brought the camera in there. That is a cool RV toy store in there. It is a monster building with nearly everything in stock you could possibly need for your RV, like three, three or four times the size of any Camping World supplies. And they had exactly what I want, the Dicor brand self-leveling sealant. I will never get any other product because this stuff actually levels correctly. 13 bucks, so yeah. Now off to Home Depot. The Depot, I'll run in here real quick, grab what I need, I know exactly what I need. Two inch lag bolts, washers, and nuts. Got everything I need, I got a dozen of all four of these things. Two inch, one quarter inch bolts with washers on the bottom, lock washers, and nuts. And so that should be good, let's go mount these. Well, actually I'm kinda hungry, maybe. Dang it, it happened again. I got lost and found my way to KFC, fine. Oh yeah, three drumsticks, original. Two sides of mashed potatoes and gravy. Mmm, ground screw. All right, so I brought one of the three panels inside the trailer here just to take a peek and see how these are gonna go. So, if if the Z brackets are lined up perfectly flush with the inside rail right here, then the center point of the hole is, I mean, literally, the center of the hole is the end of the solar panel perfectly, which would be a perfect measuring tool. Because now, all I have to do is measure the length, which I already know is 65. 65 on the dot. So, that means that the center of the hole that's gonna go in the middle of this tubing is going to be exactly 65 inches center from this one to wherever this one is. Easily, perfect. One. There we go. Go ahead and test fit one of these. Perfect. All right. All right, I got all four holes drilled initially here. Other two over here, ready to go, ready to go. Next step, uh, I need to measure from the center of each of these holes, get that measurement, and then whatever that is, that will determine the placement of where these go exactly on this end of both sides. And then we can put the first panel up. So some success here, although it is slow going. I got a panel up here and it's in there. My holes actually matched up. The only thing is I do need somebody to help me tighten all this in the end because I gotta have somebody hold a wrench up here while I turn the one down below. 
I mean, I might be able to reach my hand up here and get just this side, but the other two panels on the other side, I'm gonna need a second person, but inside we got the washer and the lock nut and everything looks good. It worked. Now I'm gonna move the ladder to the other side and see how close those two holes are. <laughs> Check it out. All four lined up. I got them tight. I don't need a helper. I found a little hack. I'll show you how I do it up here without having an additional person. See the uh, crescent wrench sticking out right there? <laughs> well, I put it on the top bolt and it's up against the ladder right here. So on the inside, when I'm twisting it tight, this is helping me. This is my helping hand. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know it's wrong, but guess what? It also works. It also works, y'all. <laughs> Uh, that ain't going anywhere. <sighs> Don't do what I do, blah, blah, blah. All right, we're about to lose daylight, so I'm gonna update you now. I got the, I got two of the four brackets on the last panel. I still gotta go up there and measure where the other two go. I've got the solar wire coming down right now. The two panels are completely bolted. I'll show you. Okay, securely mounted both of them up here. Again, just working on getting these measurements of these holes where the one inch tubing is for the last panel. We'll wire it up uh, in series, series, yes, in series. And then uh, I'll make sure that this one is securely mounted uh, before I go to bed tonight. But like I said, the sun's setting over there. So I'm quickly running out of time. Well, good morning. I did finish that last solar panel, getting that mounted up there last night. However, we got rain and I did not finish. See, I was actually up there trying to finish things up and it started pouring out of nowhere. And that's the only bummer part about living so far out is Sometimes my weather switches from Sholo, like on my phone, Sholo, Concho, Vernon. I feel like there was even a fourth one sometimes, but they flat out have no idea what the weather's gonna do once it gets over the White Mountains. And I mean, there was 0% chance of rain. It poured last night. It poured all night. It is mostly dried out here on the property, at least. Uh, but oh my gosh, and I, I should also mention that uh, we broke some records. We had one of the hottest summers on record, and the National Weather Service has now officially said now that we had the driest monsoon season here in the White Mountains in the history of keeping records out here. For five months, there was absolutely no measurable rain at all, and then August, the monsoon month, 0 0.03. August was when I wasn't even here. I actually, it was too hot for me. So I went up to Washington State for an entire month up there. Well, we never got the monsoons. So last night's rain was the most rain we've seen here, here in over five months. So uh, I don't know what's going on. We're just smashing records, hottest and then driest. I wonder what this winter's gonna bring. I did get a memory from last, last year on this date when I was at Camper Van Kevin's, finishing up, putting some locks on Babe the Blue Box when it was at Kevin's and it snowed. We're not even close to seeing snow here yet. So totally different weather this year, but, and luckily I, there's no leaks because it was absolutely pouring guys. But we're gonna, that's the first thing we're gonna do today is, hi, Dana. It's picking berries over there. I'm gonna seal up all these holes on the roof. I got a grommet that I'm gonna put in here in the metal and then we're gonna decor up everything. And then even if it does rain this afternoon, I will be able to work inside. I can close all the doors, have a light on in here and hopefully finish up this project today by tonight. I know you want to come out, Opie. Tara does too, because Gin's out here playing and, and Opie sees him playing. And he's like, I want to play with Diana's kitties. I know you do, but I need to work and I can't keep my eyes on you. You can't just roam free. I don't trust you yet. I don't, I'm sorry. Soak it in, get all dirty, then go back inside. Okay, you little weirdo. <laughs> what a good boy. All right, I got the rubber grommet installed there, so no wires are gonna hit any sharp piece of metal there. Next step, I'm gonna go get my caulk gun and we're gonna decor up everything on the roof so we can move on and be weather, weather tight. This part doesn't have to look pretty up here. It's just gotta be functional. 
and this will all self level in about an hour it'll go flat it'll cover everything Okay, we're basically done with the NPPT solar charge controller. The PV is coming in. It should be live. Uh, the battery is not connected yet, but I'm I'm assuming the reason why this isn't on is because it still requires the battery to be connected. I'm hoping. So we're gonna go ahead and move to the battery. And thankfully for me, a company sent me a battery to get me started on this trailer project. Uh, enjoy, bot. Here, this is a lithium 12 volt, 280 amp hour battery. Though that's that's a lot of battery in in the same space. Plus, it's really lightweight. It can be charged down to like five percent without damaging it. Some of the specs on here. Again, it's a 280 amp hour. That number doesn't mean a whole lot to me. I like this. The watt hour, 3584 watt hours because everything is counted in watt hours and how much it uses each hour per watt. And plus this is a kind of a more basic system that's not gonna have all the extra features in here. So I'm gonna be memorizing the 3584 watt hour, but this is light. Look, I can pick it up with one hand on one side. So this is gonna go back behind here with some more of these blocks to hold it back there. But again, I, I just wanna hook up the battery terminals here to see if the inverter will come on real quick. All right, we might possibly see a little spark here when I put the negative side on, that's normal. Well, no spark, but let's go ahead and hook it up. Come back up here, so I gotta put the plate back on. Bingo, bango! We are live! Bringing in solar, charging the battery right there. It's it's quite a bit more uh, downscale from like some of the other systems I've worked, but this is gonna be super functional and this is such an easy, easy install. Even I can do it, so you can definitely do it. We're charging guys with solar. That is awesome. There's the light, cool. It's telling me how many volts are coming in, I think. I'll have to get used to this system. There, there is a manual with this one, but at least we know it works. I'm going to disconnect the battery again, slide it back under there, rewire it back up, secure it in there, and then, actually before we do that, we do need to hook up the inverter and the fuse. I had Daryl make me some uh, thicker gauge battery terminals for the inverter. We're not going to be using the ones that came with the inverter. They're just so thin and light 
uh, even for 2000 watts and 4000 watts peak, I'm just, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna not, not use those ones. But I will have an inline 200 amp fuse to put in. So let me wire a few more things, get the battery situated, and then I'll get back to you. All right, so a couple things. I trimmed this because I don't need it. I'm not putting the uh, charge controller there. The charge controller is actually up there now. Better eye level to see the watts and the condition of the batteries. And I'll clean up the wires later. Ha <laughs> ha. Nobody believes me when I say that. The inverters here, this is bugging me because it's upside down. The, the letters are upside down. But I want the outlets here. I want the battery connections hidden back here where the other fan's at. So that's how I'm doing it. I got the positive running here. I'm just going to put this little fuse right there. Positive will go there, which will reach the battery over there. Just got to drill this in real quick. Okay, now I can tighten up these and that, and once I do negative to the battery, this will be hot. Okay, getting close now. All right, actually, you know, this is, this is looking pretty clean. I like the way the wires come down behind the poster. Uh, I'll be able to clean this up a little bit as well in the corner down there. I, I do have now the negative of the inverter going back here. So as you can see, we've got all four of our last wires here uh, ready to go in. The two positives here first, the two negatives in there, and then uh, this inverter should power on, and then we're done. <laughs> that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, actually. The solar panels mounting was the hardest part. All right, let me get this hooked up. Well, that's it guys. We are up and running 100%. It is working. I'm feeling pretty proud right now. May not be the cleanest install, but I'm going to vacuum everything up, get everything all cleaned up. Oh, fan just kicked on on this. I changed it to watts. It's really cloudy outside, but 100 and 150 watts are coming in right now, charging the uh, lithium battery there. Let's do a test. I borrowed Diana's Hair dryer, thank you. It's a perfect little test because that'll pull 1500 watts, but even more when it starts up. And this is rated for 4000 watts peak surge. So let's plug her in. We got the green light for power there, that's good. Heck yeah. Well, look, we can, we can blow all the dust away with the hair dryer. That's perfect. What a perfect use for that. There we go. Yeah, what dust? Up there too, yeah. Get all that out of there. Oh yeah. Looking good. Working really well. Oh, there's high. Yeah. Fans? No. It likes it. Ooh, 330 watts coming in now. Yeah. We will go peek up on the roof real quick now that I got everything finished up here. 750 watts all sealed up wanted to show you what the lap sealant looks like see how it got all flat and filled in everything looks great or watertight i like how the curve of this really cuts off airflow however we're gonna have the taller rv right here anyway not gonna be a whole lot of air here anyway but you can see since last night's rain a bunch more dirt on the panels so Still have to clean them again before we leave, but this project is done. Could I have more fuses and breaker boxes and DC connects, disconnects and, and all that stuff? Yeah, I probably could, but uh, this is a pretty basic system and uh, it obviously works. It was really easy to understand how to install it. And I'll bet somebody watching on my channel is thinking that they can do the same thing for basically pretty cheap, right? The panels, 35 bucks a piece here, the battery, Yes, I got it for free, and thank you, EnjoyBot, for sending me that. That is going to be an awesome addition here. I will put some links in the video description where you can get that bad boy for super, super cheap. Links, video description. You do not have to spend a fortune on lithium batteries. The inverter, I believe, was $119. The charge controller was $99. And then I've got another $120 in wires and connectors that I had Daryl build for me up there for my custom system. So, again, if you're in the Concho St. John's 
Vernon, Sholo area, hit up Alternative Discount Energy there and uh, tell them what you're trying to do. If you're a DIYer, like I am now, uh, you can just have them build all the wires needed. You don't got to rent any of those crimpers or do anything. You can just have it all ready to go. Pretty cool. Let me clean this up and uh, we're getting close to leaving, guys. Uh, we didn't get much sun today, though, did we? Very cloudy. It's still threatening to rain here. I am going to start putting things away. Probably tonight I'm going to work on the, tra on the trailer a little more as far as those things I'm going to bring, like the, the miniature barbecue grill and my little fire pit with a propane tank. I want to get everything uh, organized inside Trailer Swift. And then uh, that'll be ready to hook up to the RV so we can head south for the winter. In the meantime, Danny's talking about going on another trip, another epic Harley trip here. I'm kind of cold. This is the, the new vest that I got uh, from uh, Mesa, Arizona. It's completely blank. There's nothing on this vest. And so now I get to start a whole new collection of patches, which is uh, uh, actually a lot more fun and exciting than, than magnets these days. And I can I can find patches at, like everywhere. It's a lot more popular, especially when you go to national parks and stuff. I've been to national parks that only have patches and don't have stickers or magnets. So uh, this this will be my next vest to completely fill out. You guys be well. I'll uh, see you in a couple days. We'll, we'll figure this all out. I'm excited about Trailer Swift. It looks good. It's and I, I'm I'm a little proud. I'm I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm like, yes, we did it. <laughs> Hope you want to say bye. Say bye, everybody. I get kisses. Thanks for kisses. Bye, guys.